As the president's tenure comes to a close, tonight we appraise his leadership journey and his leadership style. And what next for the Saraki dynasty as we discuss how the results of the last presidential and governorship elections in Kwara State dealt another blow to the Saraki dynasty. This is Plus Politics. I am Mary Annika. The outgoing administration of President Muhammadu Buhari has said his government recorded uh, remarkable successes in agriculture, the economy, infrastructure, security, health and anti-corruption. He also claimed that more than 3,800 kilometers of new roads had been constructed across the country. Meanwhile, the Independent National Electoral Commission has declared Amadou Fintiri as the winner of Adamawa State governorship elections. We had to put that out there because that's breaking news. Now, the returning officer, Mohamed Mele, declared the incumbent Fintiri of the People's Democratic Party winner of the Tuesday um, elections uh, after polling 430,861 votes to defeat his major counterpart, Aisha Binani, of the All Progressives Congress, uh, APC, who polled 398,788 votes. Well, joining us to discuss uh, tonight on Mr. President's leadership style, we have Osa Umweni. He is a social commentator. And also joining us is Sonny Maduka. He's a public affairs analyst. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us, and good evening. Good evening. Thank you, Anne. Great. Uh, let's start by, you know, taking ourselves back down memory lane to um, Mr. President's um, speech at his inauguration ceremony back in May of 2015. Now, that particular, um, you know, speech reverberated all across the country and outside the country. Remember the very um, famous phrase where he said, I am for everyone and I'm for nobody. Now, the biggest question, obviously, is as we look back at, you know, that very interesting speech and um, the kind of confidence it boosted, uh, you know, in Nigerians, can we say that Mr. President has lived up to the expectations of that speech that he made on May 2015? I'll start with you, um, uh, Mr. Wayne. Uh, I'm, uh, thank you for having me. Mr. President, um, May 29 will make it eight years of, um, of his um, leadership in Nigeria from 2015. And like you just said, yeah, um, we Nigerians came, we had the hope when uh, Buhari came, became president in 2015. Uh, lots of us were jubilating that, oh, uh, things are going to change for the better, especially his fight against corruption. Um, also, at least that corruption part was like something that's um, sticked out for everybody. Eight years down the uh, eight years down the lane, I would say I would say President Buhari has not. Um, uh, I, I will just if I want to score him, I will score him fair. Uh, it was not it was not something that we really um, we can say we're happy with. Majority of Nigerians did he meet? Did he take? Did he? Did he took us? Did we fare paid well with him? I would say it's a mix. It's a mix. It's a mixed reaction for people. Um, I think we did not. We did not move an inch from where we are, 20, 2015, at the position where we are now. Twenty. I mean, twenty twenty three. Um, more of more millions of Nigerians are falling to the poverty line. Uh, our, our economy has been has been battered, and. Um, Things have not been working so well. In the area of security that we said, oh, retired general that he is, that will help us to uh, fight insecurity in Nigeria. That has not really worked well for, for us in Nigeria because uh, the insecurity, yes, you say the part of Boko Haram has been degraded technically uh, to, to an extent, but um, we had bandits, kidnapping, terrorists in different parts of the country have, been, have come up under him. So to me, it's um, it's it's a it's a fair. If I want to score him the part in the, in the like like in the writing the script or marking the script, I would just say it's, it's fair to me. Mm. Let's talk about quickly before I go to Mr. Maduka. Uh, let's talk about uh, the fact that um, when the president started his tenor, it took six months. I'm sure that you remember. Um, we waited to see the people that he was going to, um, the people that were going to constitute his cabinet. We remember uh, asking questions and people waiting. And the president made a statement saying that he was looking for men that were upright and, you know, people who were fit for these roles. And then when the list came out, of course, there was a lot of grumbling and murmuring. Um, 
and let's look at the executive and the people who Mr. President have worked with over time. Let's also not forget that um, um, a lot of people had queried the fact that there was um, some sort of silence from Mr. President as to how accessible he was to the people. W what are your thoughts on that? Um, the first, the first red flag for me was the six months that it took him to uh, to set up a cabinet. Well, this this was a man that has gone through uh, from two thousand and three. He has been in permanent fixtures in all the electoral, electoral I mean, election cycles. So two thousand and three, two thousand and seven, two thousand and seven. 2011, 15, and finally 15, um, locked shine on him and um, he became Nigerian president. So in my mind, I was thinking that this man will, uh, Mr. President will, uh, you know, as soon as he was sworn in, we quickly, you know, set to, set, to, set to work. But for six months, we waited and waited and waited. And in those six months, the economy, the economics have been started having, having challenges because there was no there was no clear-cut economic policy. So we're looking at his, his president body languages. We're saying everything about him is the body language. Oh, as soon as he came in corruption, we go. So there was no. So, oh, and lo and behold, we had the cabinet formed. And the cabinet was one of the, let me say, one of the last plus cabinet that we ever had, we ever had in recent times. The, you cannot see any star performance there. You cannot see any, you cannot see the hope that you want to see. Rather, right he was filled up with politicians. He was filled, filled up with people that he wanted to do IOUs for, people that have been loyal who have been i mean let me say who have been with him different parties during this political journey these are the kind of people that we saw there in those places so it was like i always giving out to giving out to several 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 politicians who have been in these businesses since over 20 or 30 years now so that's that's kind of people that we saw there so that was beginning for me that was the beginning of of um of of um of the bad experience that nigerians had getting from from this from this from this government the ministers were not the kind of people because they are sensitive key positions. I know politicians worked hard for you. Politicians did all sorts of things for you to win. I agreed. But there are, there are sensitive positions, ministries or parasitas or MDAs that we needed to put in the round in the round square in the in the square hole. But we didn't get that. Mm. What we had was to give um was, was to give it out to um to like um like a dashing like patronage. We saw people who were not fit in some some key areas of the economy. We, we saw them being handed over um, 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 strategic positions of the economy. We saw super. We saw super ministers. We saw ministers you know, about four or five. I mean, three three positions together as one. And we saw the outcome of it after four years. And his, his inability to to appraise his his, his his cabinet and say, okay, after a year or two, who is who? What what are the criteria? Who is not doing well? What's the appraisal here and there? But he did not do it. So most of them followed him up to the. Um, to, to after the first time and after the second time again, second journey, and same set of people again were with him again. They are with him now towards the end. So we can all see where um, Nigerian has 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 gotten gotten herself into. To me, it was we, we didn't have the clear cut economic policy. There is no way you can pinpoint any clear cut economic policy of this of this administration. Since so everything was done at just a snap, just you know something that just pick up and say, okay, I want to do it now and now and now. So mm. that's how we got to, to the stage that we are now. Mr. Madaka, let me come to you now. Um, for a president or for a man who pushed so hard to be president, he tried over and over again to you know run for this office years and years. And um, many would have said that he, he could have given up, you know. But then he finally got a shot at the office. I have had conversations with leaders of thought. I, I remember um, just before the elections, I spoke with the secretary of the Northern Elders Forum, and I asked what exactly he thought was the driving force of President Muhammad Buhari over the years uh, for wanting to be president of this country. And I'm asking you to, um, could it be just for the, the fun of you know, power grabbing? Could it have been that he wanted to, you know, re um, put his name again in the annals of history as not just one that was a military president, but of course a, a democratic president, not a dictator? Or could it also be that he really wanted to lead a good Nigeria? And do we have anything close to a good Nigeria right now? Yeah, thank you, Anne, for the question. Uh, first of all, before you talk about leadership, you must have a blueprint. But what I discovered about APC or PMB is that I don't think they have any blueprint. And I don't even think that uh, they believe they could come on board 
as at 2015. So what happened was just like, okay, an issue of uh, suddenness. And just like you said, uh, it took him six months to gather his cabinet. That shows you that there was no preparation prior to uh, being a victor in that election. And uh, let me go back to a little bit of what uh, my brother just said. Uh, one of the best ways to appraise uh, govern government is uh, the security of lives and properties. And we are looking at it from that trajectory. What has APC done or what has PMB done in terms of securing the lives of Nigerians? We are all aware now that even this, the bandits, the terrorists, the kidnappers, they've resumed their normal operation, just like we had in Southern Kaduna, some part of Plateau, Benue, Kogi, and other parts now being under siege. Now, when you are reading your citation about him, you talked about uh, how many kilometers of road that uh, PMB has built. But it's only the living that will benefit from whatever infrastructure that was executed. The two pivotal infrastructures I could say that uh, PMB did was first train service to the road constructions but my problem is how many people are using the train and how many people are using the road? People are not even using the road that you, you are proud in, that you constructed. So it means that something is wrong. If you build an infrastructure and people are not using it, it's of no use. It's a waste of money. Let us go it in this way. Look at it from economic aspect. As of today, the inflationary rate is 22.4 percent. That is the high, highest ever we've experienced in this country. As of today, Nigerians are buying Naira. With Naira, that is something that's absurd in Nigeria. As of today, you can't buy fuel at any normal price. I buy fuel here, 300 per liter. Some places, 320. So there's nothing you can tangibly look at that and say, yes, this is the appraisal format you can use on PMZ's uh, scorecard. My brother talked about the super ministers, and that is a problem. Every serious organization must understand when to put a halt. And that halt is if you have people that are working with you and they are not going through the process or through the policy formulation you can start them. But do you know that these eight years, I don't think that PMB ever sacked any minister. And when you talk about corruption, the same APC former chairman came on board openly and said, whatever you've committed, whatever sin you've committed, once you cross over to APC, your sins are forgiven. The same regime is where we have a person collecting 109 billion naira and return 33 billion, and that is it. So corruption index, as far as I'm appraising PMB, is zero. Hmm. Then let's go to another issue. Petroleum. We see that NMPC is a disaster. None of the refineries work. What happened to the money that was spent for the rehabilitation of the refineries. So that boils down to what? Corruption. Then let's go to education. Over 44% of Nigerian youth are out of school. And when you talk about poverty rates, 133 million out of 200. So where do you come? And let me even talk about the health care. It's rumored today that even the, our president elect or select is outside the country or medic. What does that show? It shows that everything, every sector in this regime is almost collapsing. Like somebody will say, he said, we are in ICUP. And it's unfortunate. 
Because if a regime who come up after struggling for four times to be the president, a person will come out four times to be a president. And out of that, for that, there's nothing we can point out and say this is what has happened. There's something is wrong. Let's now look at the politics. We have seen what happened this, this 2023. Can we talk about the politics? Can we talk about the election? Is this the election that every individual expects from PMBs as a parting gift? No. This election was the one of the worst uh, you know, election that I ever witnessed in my life. So these are the problem. We have a lot of things. Look at today, Adamawa is talking about. And congratulations to Fintu. Everything, as far as I'm concerned in this regime, is uh, a make-believe. And probably because the policy formulation of PMB is based on trial and error. There's no concrete. It's, it's very, it's very difficult. It's very planning. difficult. I'm so sorry to talk over you, but it's very difficult to, for for the average person who's listening to you to um, believe that um, the president and this administration is trial and error. Like I said, his, it's not his first rodeo at being in leadership. He has been a military leader of this country. And so when you say trial and error, it's not his first time. So I don't know if that sits well or, I mean, there's a better way to put it, but it cannot be trial and error, can it? Let, let, me, let me clarify that. When I talk about trial and error method of economic or whatever formulation, it means that there's no strategic, there's no long-term planning process. As a leader, who is going to lead a country? One of the basis is to have a blueprint that will take care of your economic industries. As of today, let me tell you. Let me use the MPC as an example. When you look at the policy of CBN, sometimes they miss it with physical and monetary policy together. They don't even know the dichotomy between both. So these are the why I said there is some kind of trial and error. For instance, the Naira designing. Look at the impetus. Look at what is happening. Today, there's, the, uh, there's a, a, a call, okay, we are not going to take the money, old money. Tomorrow, there's a, so there's no strong will to obey even the policy being formulated by PM. Okay. And this, to me, is a fall. It's something that I can't even phantom, I can't even explain. Because a regime should be able to start strategically, obey their law, obey their policy, and then stay on it. Okay. okay. Though I won't blame PMB. Mm. I would blame the Nigerian system. Okay. A country should have a blueprint of few years, probably five years, ten years, fifteen years, so that any regime that comes in buy into that blueprint and continue okay. with let, it. Let, let me go back to Osa. It's very interesting when people, when analysts like you, um, you know, say we should have this and we should have that. Oh yes, all fine and dandy, but. Nigeria is not necessarily a system where things should be. But, I mean, we're talking about the reality versus what should be. Um, government, they say, is a continuum, Osa. Um, just picking up from where um, Mr. Maduka stopped. Uh, but we've not seen that necessarily happen. I mean, and this is not just about the presidency. We're talking about state governments uh, across the board. We've seen governors come and go with white elephant projects, leaving some other projects halfway and just trying to make sure that it's their own project that, you know, um, makes some form of a scorecard before they leave office. And so we have so many abandoned projects across the country. Uh, but will we ever get to a point where there is actually a blueprint that everybody runs with? So wherever the other person stops, the other can, you know, continue, uh, you know, with, with the, the mantle for want of a better way to describe it. Um, can we ever have a, can we have a, have a situation where we have um, blueprints? Mm. I'm sure it's going to be very difficult for us to do that in Nigeria uh, because of the kind of country that we are. And um, the, the, the truth of the matter is that we are too divided. We're divided by our tribes, we're divided by our religion. Those are things that divides us. And those things also affect us. And moreover, we don't even have strong institutions. Institutions in the sense that um, our judiciary, our, secu our, our security and codice, we don't even have strong institutions. So what we have are people who are 
subservient to, um, to, to, to the rulers of the day, both in the state and both in, uh, um, um, in, um, in the, federal, the federal government. Now, for, 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 Buhari, for Buhari, I would say there are some certain things that he did, which definitely we have to give him kudos for him, for him to continue some of, some of the, um, the project and backed by his predecessors. For example, the, the, railway, the railway started from um, the ambassador administration when they started they are, um, trying to do some reforms, and Jonathan you know, took it up and started with the Chinese and Buhari came in and uh, they, continue, they continue on that same, on, on that same trajectory. So that, that I will have to give to him. I also have to give to him with things that he has done from the government, the, the second year bridge. You know, it's something that has been there. So he, 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 can, he can say, okay, we don't have the finances to do that. Okay, let me let me use the, the funds to do something else. You know, he makes sure that that's that that project the cost. So I don't know if it's if it's 100% completed, but I know last time uh, the minister showed us that people have, people have traveled over there. I think we can see this this um, this a vast improvement of what what was built. So just we have to give him uh, we, have, we have to give him some some kudos to that for for embarking on some project. Uh, um, and backed about by his predecessors. So the, the, the problem I have with what the problem I have with um, uh, with with people in leadership position is that if Mr. A does something, it is not his personal money that it was used to do. Um, it was was used to do that same project. It was the commonwealth of the people. So you, it, it's it's your duty to come in and see how can we complete this thing, especially if this is going to add. But do our politicians see it as because you see. Every time I talk about issues like this, we talk about the common interests of Nigerians, the interests of Nigerians, the interests of Nigerians. But does the average politician in Nigeria understand the interest of Nigerians? Because you're, you're making an, a very interesting point. It's not their name that's supposed to be on it. It is taxpayers' monies. Yes, of course, at some point people will say, well done to this governor. I mean, take, for example, Lagos State. Uh, Buba Marwa was a military administrator, but then people still remember him for his good works. But then he was not doing it because of himself. He was doing it because he wanted to move Lagos to a particular place. But how many of our politicians who are running for office see this particular opportunity to serve as opposed to getting a share of the national cake? And why is that even the narrative? Unfortunately, I can sit down here and tell that none, none, no one of our politicians has, has, has empathy for the people. Let me use that word, empathy. No one of them. No one of them can stand there. I can, I, can, I can be on debate with any one of them. No one of them have empathy. Because if you have empathy for the people, for your people that you're serving, you're going to work for them. It's not about your personal pockets. It's not, it's not about what you want to put in your... It's not about the lifestyle of becoming a governor. Because if you have empathy, you will not be, you will not be handpicking people to, to, to be your successors. You allow people to go there. Let, let the people, let the party choose. Let the system choose. That's the institution. Let them choose. No, if you if you if you want that, you won't bring your friends and cronies to become members of your cabinet. You won't bring your people to come and be your bad men that will be doing things to do or try to tell you what to do because you will know what to do. You know that the people lack basic amenities. You know that Nigeria doesn't we don't even have water to drink. We have lot, we have millions of children out of school. You drive on your boat on your convoy. You see you see you see kids walking in the streets aimlessly. There's no policy, clear-cut policy by the State House of Assembly. Education is under the states. You know, sometimes we blame, we blame the federal government. But let us also look at it in another angle. The states collect an average of over 50 or 60%, over 50% or 50, 60% or 50% of the total revenue mm. of, the, of, of the country. They collect their own share. They collect the, they collect the, the share, the revenue share from what state? From, from the local government, they are to their own. They now tell you that they open a joint account. They now appoint their cronies, their stooges, in those local government places. Some some women dissolve local governments. They dissolve the local government, and they have they have they have the they have the um, the assemblies as an appendage as people that they have picked the put. So you bring a law like a governor, a funny governor who I who I come as a former governor I come as a joker took 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 um, um, a budget of the state to the to the assembly and, and put it on the table and tell and told the and told the, um, the speaker that they should also, they should approve his budget that he will go through it and then to the government and and, and ask, slam it on top of the table this is this is the kind of joke that we have in nigeria now these days now so the problem is not even the president the problem is even the other people who are holding on to different levels of government from the states to the local government to um, to, to the federal, so Buhari can be isolated in, uh, in in the villa. He can he can give an instruction. He can give he can give he can give order. He can say, "Oh, this thing is for the betterment of Nigeria." In his own in his own in his own belief, then the people that will take it to those places, what do they do? They do things with their own self. So Buhari cannot be in everywhere. To be fair to him, 
cannot be everywhere in Nigeria where those policies, those construction, those infrastructure are being built. It's not everywhere. It's not the one that will hand over the contract to. It's not the one that will go and do the bidding and say, okay, let me even sift through all those things. So it's not the only one. So sometimes we need to give them, we need to give our, our president some of some of slack. I'm not saying, I'm not saying they they they, they have part of the blame. The bane of our development, the bane, the bane of our bad leadership also lies with our state governors. Mm. Great. They are our major problem, 36 of them. They should run the state like an entity, like a business that is profitable. Mm. No, they run this, they run the state as 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 a social club. Okay. Where 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 where, where the taxpayers' money is in their boots, where they can dish it out. At will. Okay. Let, let me so let, let, let me just let me just put in something quickly before I go because we're almost out of time. Um, okay. The the issue of state governors, yes, we th that is also I mean the whole kettle of fish on its own. It's a conversation we have to have another day. Um, but let's talk about the lead because we're always very quick to put the politicians on the chopping board, and it seems like we somewhat uh, absolve ourselves of certain responsibilities when it comes to leadership, and we leave it to the politicians, those people versus us. What is the duty of the lead in terms of these leaderships? Because they keep coming and going. And we're almost um, at the end of this um, era. We're going to be handing over, or they're going to be handing over to another government. Um, what is our role? Aside from, you know, getting our PVCs and going to the polling units to cast our votes, what should, our, should be our other role? I mean, do we even have interest in these, you know, leadership? Well, the problem is that, to me, Nigerians are, are, are such a fantastic... Um, 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 human beings, they have they have the spirit of perseverance they can endure. So people keep saying the lead has has issues. Look, what what do what? How can you blame them? They go out. People come to campaign to them, and they look at it, and they go out on election day to go and vote for those same set of people, different people, and they are. Their votes, their, 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 their votes, the votes that they gave to, the money that they gave to those people are thwarted, are thwarted, or are stolen. So what do you want them to do? To take self up, to take laws into their hands, and they will not get into, into, into crisis. The problem is not the people. Nigerians are the most easiest people to rule. All you need to do, provide the basic amenities for them. We, it is only in Nigeria that we, we, we the communities do their own rules. It's only in Nigeria that communities build schools. It's only in Nigeria that you, you, in your estates, you, you put your own security. It's not done anywhere in the world. It's not done anywhere. So to me, Nigerians are one of the best people to do. All government needs to do is to encourage them and to provide the right, right leadership. See, in an organization, when the leader does the right thing, you know, everybody for the line because right, there's law and order. Let me quickly so talk to Maduka. Can you hear me, Osa? Sorry, I have yeah, to break you. you. Yes, let me talk to Madika because we're almost out of time. Mr. Madika, what will posterity remember President Muhammad Buhari for going forward? And um, looking at who he's handing over to, uh, and of course the future of Nigeria, um, should, we be, should we hold our breath? Well, uh, a lot, but uh, if I could digress from what my brother said, I think uh, uh, the problem is... Uh, when you are a leader, you should be a father. Empathy must be there. Mm -hmm. uh, we are people are dying in this country. A lot of people are being killed, and our leader don't care. That is not why we shouldn't blame Buhari. Uh, he's in Saudi Arabia. A lot of people just yeah, last night some villagers uh, were you know uh, adopted and killed. So empathy must be first thing that we could see from a leader, which is not coming from PMB. You can give anybody anything, but when you don't have empathy, it doesn't make you a good leader. Leadership is all about the people. When you see the people as citizens, when you see the people as human beings, you should be able to know when to stop as doing certain things. For all that is happening today, we've not had even our president talk to the people and say, look, oh, sorry for what is happening. So that is, to me, uh, a very bad issue that we can take away with. Secondly, uh, the Nigerians we are talking about, we are the problem. Let me put it that way. Uh, election is coming up. We vote people. Nobody forced us. So we are reaping the harvest of our, what we sown. So if we sow bad leadership, we all equally have to you know, reap bad leadership. Mm. Four years is enough for us to look at uh, our leaders, you know, mm. you know, track them, see the antecedents, and see what we will do in order to ensure that 
whoever they were voting in to not look at us as others while they are there. So Nigerians uh, are part of the problem. So we all have one thing or the other to do. But my problem is that when you have a father who is superintending the family, you should be able to know that the function of that home rests squarely on him. And he should be able to take that responsibility and account to the family in whatever means. But when you when you relegate it, when you don't care, when nothing is happening, when your family family is burning and people are dying, you don't care. To me, that's the worst of any leader I can ascribe to. Well, and that is what, what is happening in Nigeria right now. Well, I want, I want to say thank you, uh, t gentlemen, for being part of the conversation. I want to say thank you, Osa, um, for being here. Uh, he's a social commentator. Osa Oweni, uh, thank you for joining us. Sonny Obimadika is a public affairs analyst. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Uh, this is a conversation we will have until May thank 29. You. Hopefully, um, there's, there'll be something good to remember this government for, maybe infrastructure. But thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. All right. Well, we'll take a short break. When we return, we'll be going to Choir Day to look at a dynasty that some people are saying might just be facing its end. Stay with us. <laughs>